everyone, this is Henny from Pink Elephant Media and in this section I'm going to talk to you about your website. Now your website is the most important place because all your traffic needs to arrive, it needs to be processed, it needs to be identified who these people are, what they're doing, what they're interested in. We need to know what marketing is working and what isn't. It's got to be so much more than just a place to put your products or your services and your contact details. It is the foundation and driver of your web presence. And with technology advancing at the speed of light, traditional websites are dating fast. What you need is a website that is flexible, that will grow as your business grows and allow you to understand what marketing is working and what is not. And it should come with an open source network where you have apps that you can basically plug into your website at a very, very low cost to allow you to pivot if you need to. So you're not then in five years time coming back to the drawing board again because your business has changed so much because it isn't flexible. There are a few platforms out there that allow you to do this. One is WordPress, which is one that we develop in, and the other is Shopify. Something to bear in mind if you are an e-commerce company and you are looking at Shopify is that their apps sometimes used for pivoted, although come with a very small early acquisition cost, never stop taking money month on month on month. So very, very quickly, you can be adding up all the apps that you realize that you need and end up very quickly paying well over the odds for something, which is one of the reasons why we don't develop in Shopify. But that's just something to bear in, in mind. Never has this been more prevalent, i.e. during the pandemic where we had businesses that were doing things in physical stores who did just have a web presence who were either in store or sending out and suddenly they needed pickup and delivery slots then you had other companies that have been going into companies face to face and delivering now needed online learning platforms for them to be developed you can see how very quickly things can come and change your business and in most cases this was an actually very welcomed addition to their business because it's added ev every different revenue streams wherever they looked and we were seeing companies innovating more than ever which again allows for massive expansion and if you are a real growth hacker and you're really looking to leap outside of the box what you need to do is have a website that is flexible enough to work with you and support you on that journey that isn't going to cost you a lot of money so that you are making those profits it also needs to have great technology attached to it and technology what I mean is things that will cut time consuming jobs there may be forms that you get your customers to do to fill in there may be emails that you send out a lot there may be a sort of process that you use in-house when you're onboarding a client or when you are dealing with a client on an everyday basis to keep them up to date with certain matters your website should be doing this for you you need it to be able to accept things like JavaScript so you can send retargeting ads. We talked about different types of personalities, which I'm going to go into in a minute. But again, they need to look at different personality types and then retarget the other type of buyer. They need to be flexible. They need to have an open source network of lots of apps so that you can pivot at any point. And you also need to understand what your customers are doing. And there's technology out there to do all of those things. I'm going to talk to you about self-build websites, because if you're sitting on a self-build website and here I'm talking about Wix to some degree, Shopify um, and some of the others that are well known Squarespace out there that are out there, they are very, very limited in what they can achieve for you. And so that whilst they're great for startup companies to get off the ground and to have a web presence, they are not for anyone who is really serious about their business, who really wants their business to grow, because there are the hidden costs in that of the platform. 
So one of the best things that you can do for your business is invest in a good quality website because that will then allow you to be flexible and to grow really rapidly. And technology can help improve your website performance and the results that you're getting. Things that you can do, regardless of what website you're on, immediately is to add things like Google Analytics, Google Console, Hotjar, or in our opinion, Crazy Egg, which is a much cheaper tool but does exactly the same job, which is a heat map tool, which essentially allows you to see what your client is doing when they are on your site, where they're clicking. You want it to be able to attach to your email marketing platform. You want data capture forms on there, maybe calculators. Um, that calculate results, quizzes, lead pages, Sumo, which is a tool that offers a variety of features to help you convert traffic um, to your e-commerce website. Optin Monster, which is an online shopping cart abandonment that you could equate to thousands of pounds in lost revenue. All of these things need to be added to websites to increase the chances that these people are going to convert. There are so many different things that you can do. Here's a few ideas of some of them. So a website, um, if you're a B2B company that can respond to a inquiry within an hour is 85 to 80% 80 more likely to actually get that conversion. So a website that's set up to do that is really helpful because let's face it, sometimes we're busy doing other things. We might be in a meeting with the client, we might be doing something else. So a website that allows them to jump straight on and do that. Um, some top tips for B to C marketers, um, highlight what customers think. So you might say our customers think that, or 82% of our customers think this. Write guest posts, send thank you cards, A, B, test your product pages. Use exit intent pop-ups. You don't want to pop up there when they immediately arrive, they get bored. So maybe a scroll down the page and then it pops up. This is all technology that needs to be added to your site request shares with order confirmation, send social media engagement cards, send a buy again email with maybe associated products or if they haven't completed the card, send them that. 69% of people don't complete their card. Um, a personalised homepage, so recognising the person when they turn up. Set up a referral programme, show how your other customers are shopping. Set up retargeting ads, create a sense of urgency to fuel sales. So if people think they're going to miss out, they get FOMO and they're straight in there. Offer content upgrades. So if you are selling a product that could be upgraded, upgrade it. Off, offer that through the cart or maybe downgrade a product and sell them the upsell. Cross market with other campaigns to drive traffic. So for example, if you have a look-alike business in a similar area for example we might team up with uh, business coaches to deliver training to our database because it's the same target audience we'll go and do it for them they can come and do it for us that increases our market share um, and again b2c is no different because you could team up with people who have handbag brands if you're selling shoes or other women's paraphernalia that they might have. There's loads and loads of options to increase affiliate marketing across all of your campaigns. But again, we need to see how successful these are. So your website really has to be set up to do that. Show trust badges, incentivize at your checkout page to add more to your cart. Reduce the input fields. People hate filling out loads of data or make that intuitive for them to fill it out so it already knows which fields it's going to do and embrace conversation. Your clients are going to have questions, so let's use them. Um, use FOMO live metrics, so when people think they're going to miss out, they're going to jump on in. Um, use a solution-focused SEO title. Hook in new customers with loss leaders, so that might be buy this and it looks ridiculously cheap, and yes it will, but you know that they're going to then end up buying a lot more for you and turn your visitors into customers via social posts 
answer FAQs, maybe on category pages, ensure your website loads in under three seconds. That is absolutely imperative. Include comparison guides for similar products. Focus effort into generating customer reviews because the more reviews you get, the more you get noticed by the search engines and the more likely you are then to be delivered as a search result. Negotiate advertiser access to influencers, Facebook pages, un don't under promise uh, um, or under promise and then over deliver to your customers and always strive to out deliver because that will get drive repeat orders and genuine loyalty schemes that are focused on user behavior. So learn from your customers as you're going. Your website should help you learn from who your customers are and what they are doing. If it doesn't, then it's not serving in your best interest. Show visitors the true discount value or offer a price match guarantee and partner up with other brands to do giveaway loops. Those are such good, really quick ways to, ways to scale your B2B business really quickly. B2C business, apologies. If you have a B2B business, there's one thing that I'm going to tell you to do straight away, and that is to help them. The actual value in your business is the knowledge that you hold. And that is why we do what we do for the growth up is we want to share our knowledge become a critical part of their business life maybe their workflows get testimonials get video format in a video format if you can because that people love that they love consuming videos add training build a community use live chat Talk about trending topics, incentivize referrals. Again, don't just believe because you've done a great job that they're going to go and refer you. They don't always do that. So give them a cash incentive or a money off something else incentive to get them to do that. Integrate with other companies, piggyback off existing databases using API reversal, a bit like um, Airbnb where they did an API reversal into Craigslist. Look at existing databases that are already out there like Facebook or LinkedIn. Those are huge drivers of traffic to business. Create a library of content because your knowledge is absolutely key. Maybe have an FAQ section on your site. Tap into the power of LinkedIn. I cannot tell you how important this is. It definitely will add a huge revenue stream to your business and only 1% of users are using it properly. But yet we have added, we double our business year on year by using LinkedIn and we have the training there for you to be able to understand what we do and how we do it for ourselves as well as our clients. Send out network invitation. This tactic is not just for social media apps and consider how many people involved in a B2B buying decision. Encourage users to share with their B2B network so you can work wonders for your B2B, B2B SaaS products. Build a useful free tool. I can't tell you how good that is because again and again and again, people will use it, they'll come back to it. Think of API and app integrations creating content and making it shareable, embeddable, using ebooks, slide shares, webinars, information, articles, especially articles where you maybe are trying to persuade someone to buy, uh, but you know that the person who's going to research isn't that end person. So they're asking people to go out, research the best company to do whatever. Having a price comparison or a comparison ready done for them to download, to take to their boss, is a really good way of just cutting it because you can guarantee the person who's doing that research wants the laziest option to say that they've done their research. So if it is already there for them, they're going to just take that straight away. And if you've shown you to be the best against your competitors, you're very likely to win. Think about your LinkedIn presence. Make sure that's absolutely optimized and the activity that you're doing maybe sponsor updates think about free trials or freemium or a plus support option make your products so easy your products so easy so if you've got products on a b2b site that it requires no training to use it whatsoever 
think about customization, find ways to suggest what they should do next, make them move through a journey as you would want them to. Think about discounts, rewards, incentives to spread the word about you, or maybe give an incentive to early adopters, especially if you are a startup. So those are just a fraction of some of the ideas that you can use. But then we need to think about how they are actually wedded, actually added to our website. And psychology is one of the ways in which these are added. So things like looking at contrast offers are really clever. No one is ever buys the three pound because it looks too small. They make the medium look pretty large, but for an extra 50p, why would you not go the whole way? You've got obviously was and now offers. There's loads of psychological things that you can do to make your buyers buy. As we discussed, there are two types of buyer and marketing tends to be undervalued in B2B companies because it is generally thought that decisions are based on a rational basis. But the B2B Institute with LinkedIn proved new insight into this topic and discovered that business owners and decision makers make decisions based on both heart and mind. So we need to make sure that we have got this right. And the reason why they do that is they have a fear of getting it wrong. So you need to make sure you have got a good balance between emotional and factual information. We need to look at ways of retargeting and make sure that you use landing pages. Landing pages are incredibly important because it means that we can get all the message that they want. They're not taking lots of different journeys in different ways. The reason why you want a landing page is that every time you make someone go to a different page or take a different action along your sales funnel, you're going to lose people on the way. So you need to make it slick and quick and very easy for them to do that. By combining traditional marketing and psychology with technology and is where your growth will come from. And bringing that all together with a message and a product that you know is going to work will actually drive growth to your business. So what you need to do now is focus on things that you can do one step at a time. Start with growth hacking techniques. Look at getting guests, getting contributors, maybe repurposing content on multiple channels. Think about shooting videos, maybe turning that into a podcast, a book. Ensure your website is fit for purpose. Use cross marketing and brand inquiries, but keep the focus. The focus for Facebook was to get individuals to join 